Hi everyone, my name's Spencer and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing something a little different and instead of just showing you how I set my March bullet journal spreads, I'm also going to be showing you how I've been decorating and using my journal in this first quarter of the year. You've probably noticed that I haven't been around as much as usual. In fact, this is my first video of the year. Yeah, my first video of the year. So after a series of technical issues, burnout and pain flares, I'm finally in a place where I can make videos again. The saddest thing about not sharing my journal in videos with you is that I've actually been really loving the setups and spreads that I've been making, and I'm really proud of them. So I'm going to be flipping through my journals so far to show you what I've created. For my front of bullet journal pages, I went with this pastel gamer girl theme inspired by these gamer stickers from Nona Gallery, who is an absolutely incredible artist that I met at a comic con last year. But honestly, this sticker set really, really restarted my love of orange and pink as a colour combination, and I'm, I'm just loving it, I'm living for it. The spreads in this setup include a title page, a year at a glance, and a vertical future log for all 12 months, because I like to have a good overview of the year. There is also a when did I last tracker, which as you can see, I've mostly used the weekly version instead of the monthly, so I'll probably adjust that next time that I make the spread and just include the weekly version. I also have a spread for brainstorming some SMART goals, which is something I learned about in therapy and has been really helpful for me. I also have a year in pixels page, which is set up to track the comic cons that I attend this year. I haven't been able to go to one yet, but fingers crossed I can go soon. Opposite that page, I've made a pocket page in the same style as the one at the front of my journal that holds my grid spacing ruler. And this one's for me to put tickets in, or wristbands, or business cards, little things like that that I get from cons as kind of a keepsake envelope. Other pages I have in this setup are my achievements page, which is where I write down all the big and small things that I achieve whilst I'm doing this journal. Um, I think it's really important to record those things, we get very caught up in what am I doing next, what's the next goal, that I think it's important we reflect on what we have already achieved. My next spread is my 23 in 2023 tracker page. I've set this up as a Dutch door and it's kind of a year in pixels tracker in the middle. On it are 23 things that I want to do 23 times in 2023. I got this idea from Jashi Corinne, she's done a lot of setups like this, and I haven't done one before but I wanted to give it a go. And the pages behind the tracker are for me to jot down notes for the date that I did the thing and what the thing was, if that makes sense. So for example, I've got on this to watch documentaries, so I can write down the date and the name of the documentary that I watched. This is also to kind of stop me from doubling up and crossing something off twice because my memory is shocking, <laughs> hence why I need to journal. This next page is a flowchart about doing the thing. If you don't know, I am disabled, so sometimes I can't do all the things I want to do in a day, um, which really sucks, but you know, you have to find that balance. And a good friend of mine made this chart, and I've been using it to help me decide if I should do the thing or if I should rest. If you want to have a closer look at it, there is a post on my Instagram about it. Next, I have another list page. This is for things that people recommend to me that I normally would forget about, but now I have a page to write them down on. This links into the next spread, which I've called my library card spread. This page is where I've been writing down the things I consume, like games I've been playing, TV shows I've been watching, films, and books that I've read. The book section is very empty right now, but that's probably because I am gaming more than I am reading at the moment. And it's called the library card page because you can get all of these things out at the library as well. So next, I want to show you my January setup. I didn't really want to have to do a lot of drawing in January because I was already behind in my schedule and I didn't have a laptop. So I decided to do a scrapbooking theme using some gold foiled Japanese themed washi tapes that I got from Stationery Pal. These were a lot of fun to set up, and it was really nice to give my hands a break from like drawing lots of things and create art using washi tape instead. I also tried a different style of weekly this month. I'd experimented with this style in a custom journal that I was commissioned to make, and I decided to give it a go, see if I 
would like using it as well. And I like it for the journaling aspect, like writing down notes and like quick thoughts and things like that, but not so much for to-do lists. I think I prefer the vertical version of a weekly for that. February was a month I was really excited for. This one is actually a recreation of the very first bullet journal setup I ever made uh, in a journal. I was using kind of loose pieces of paper before that, but I didn't end up sharing it with the world because I got a bit self-conscious about it. But it is a theme that's kind of dear to my heart. It was a wolf and forest theme. And if you know anything about me, you'll know I'm obsessed with wolves. Um, and I wanted to recreate it to prove to myself how far I've come with my art and design. I was so happy with how this turned out. And yes, I did use my tattoo as the art for the cover page. And yes, I did try to reference it from my arm. <laughs> it's because I couldn't find the photo of when it was first done. And I couldn't take a photo and reference that because I used my phone to film. So now we're finally onto my March setup. The theme I chose for this month is Monarch Butterflies. This is actually another recreation. I originally made this theme for a commission journal that was nature-based, and as soon as I finished, particularly this month's worth, I knew I wanted this theme in my journal too. I'm starting off by making a template for the butterfly. I did this for the original version too, but have somehow lost it, so I had to make a new one. I worked out the basic shape and size I wanted for my butterfly. For some reason, I decided to really overcomplicate this process, but you can avoid it by folding your piece of paper in half before sketching your design. So after sketching it, I cut it out on the fold to get the mirrored shape. And I did have to trim mine down a little due to the fact that I accidentally doubled the body of the butterfly too. But if I had just drawn half of the body, then it wouldn't have been a problem. The reason I'm making a stencil is to kind of speed up the process because I'm going to be drawing a lot of these butterflies and I didn't want to spend ages just trying to get the basic shape down so this was a shortcut for me, even with all the complications. After making my stencil I gathered the rest of my supplies that I wanted to use for this setup and that includes first and foremost a cup of tea and a snack, <laughs> my fine liners and markers, I'm using a mix of Crayola super tips Stedler jeweled tip pens and my Tombow Fudenosuke pens. I also got out a mix of papers and stickers and stamps, including my typewriter letter stamps um, in lowercase, that I thought worked with the theme. So they were all nature based, all black, brown, tan, and orange, along with some green themed ones for just like a little extra pop of colour. And of course, I also had to add a ridiculous amount of washi tape, because I am an unapologetic maximalist. Using my butterfly stencil, I mapped out where I wanted the butterflies on my cover. Initially, I tried to fit three on the page, but I ended up cutting that down to two for the final version. I was working off of memory from the version that I'd already made, um, again because I couldn't bring up the photos to reference since they were on my phone. Once I got the rough shape of the butterfly down, I then went in and added some other ephemera, such as stamping this moon stamp onto the page and then layering over that with this tan parchment paper with March stamped onto it. I'm still learning to try and embrace the imperfection of using letter stamps, but sometimes I'm still too fussy and I do redo the whole thing. <laughs> Once I had that laid down, I went back to my butterflies and started defining them more. Adding a little shape to the body and the lines showing how the wings folded. From there, I mapped out where the orange spots on the wings would go. I really simplified this pattern. Monarch butterflies have some beautiful markings and they can be really complex, but I knew I was going to be drawing a lot of these so I didn't want to make it too difficult for myself. Sketching is a lot of trial and error, but in the end I came up with a design that I think works well. The top wings each have four large orange sections that kind of piece together, and then three smaller dots of orange around the tip of that uppermost orange shape. For the lower wings, I just drew an arch under the bottom of the top wings, and then two more on either side of the body. I then drew three or four 
more orange teardrop shapes on each lower wing. I use my Tombow Fudonesco hard tip pen to outline the butterflies. I have seriously fallen head over heels in love with this pen and I am for sure going to be stocking up next payday. After outlining the individual shapes, I started to colour them in. Initially, I coloured all the space that wasn't going to be orange black, with the plan of using gel pens to make the white spots along the tips of the wings. Unfortunately, I couldn't find my Sakura Jelly Rolls, which in my opinion are the best white gel pens, so I tried using a range of other ones, but they just weren't opaque enough, so I broke out the paint pens. Even after a lot, and I mean a lot, of shaking the pens and layering the paint, they still weren't opaque enough, and then my hands freaking hurt from all the pen shaking and nib pressing, so I had to take a break. Going forwards, I outlined the white dots with my Tombow Fudonosuke pen and just left them uncoloured, and that worked a lot better than trying to paint over the black ink. You may notice that none of these butterflies have antennae. That is a deliberate choice. Um, it's because I didn't want to draw them. I knew I'd be drawing swarms of these butterflies and I didn't want there to be random black lines interrupting the patterns because I thought that would look more like I'd made a mistake than a deliberate choice. So I chose to forego them. Sorry little butterflies. When it came to colouring the orange spots, I knew I wanted them to have the gradient that you see in actual monarch butterflies. So after a little trial and error, I figured out the best way to do that was to colour them in initially using this light orange shade from the Crayola Super Tips and then go over that, starting from the furthest point away from the butterfly's body, with this Zig Art and Graphic twin pen in the shade 042. I tried not to be too careful or overthink this part, just swiped the pen across the spot, lifting it a little as it got closer to the butterfly's body to create the gradient effect. And I am absolutely obsessed with the result. I think it improves the look of the butterflies so much and adds dimension and drama to the wings. The Zig pen is water-based though, so I had to be careful using it on top of the Tombow pens as they could bleed and blend. I did consider doing the orange first and then the black, but honestly I love showing you how different the wings look before and after adding this effect layer. So. I saved the final swipe of orange till last. Next on this page, I added the layers of washi tape that I wanted to use. I decided on this brown grid tape and this gold foiled translucent washi tape with leaf designs on it. They layer so prettily and I love the hint of gold that this has. But after doing this, I thought the page still looked a little unfinished, so I added a thin black border around the edge. Instead of a quote for this month, I decided to build a remember page for my social media trackers. I did something similar back in November with my Thistle and Tartan theme, and it worked quite well, so I wanted to give it another go. I also wanted a reason to come back and look at this cover page, because it's just so pretty. These stickers that I'm pulling out are from the Happy Planner. I believe I bought these through Craft Stash, which is a European company that stocks Happy Planner accessories. So if you're not in the US, you might be able to get them from there. I played around with the layout of this page, but eventually settled on having space for the content ideas stickers in the top left and the platform tracker in the bottom right. This left me a lot of space to jot down or elaborate on ideas that I have for my social media this month. I also decided I wanted to use this remember sticker as the heading for the page, so I tried layering it on top of some different washi tapes I'd selected, but I ended up going with the green and gold leafy tape again. It's just so pretty, how could I not? And by the way, I think all of these washi tapes are from Stationery Pal, if I recall correctly. I used my grid spacing ruler to help me figure out how much washi tape I needed to use. Originally, I had thought it would only be a little bit larger than the title sticker and kind of equal to a third, a third of the page, but I decided it needed to be more. So I went through the process again, but with a longer piece of washi tape this time. I also gave this page that thin black border around the edge to match the cover page. My next spread, as usual, is my monthly spread. As you can see, I'd already sketched out the calendar boxes and title, but not the butterflies yet. This was just so I could make sure everything I needed would fit on the page in the dimensions that I liked, and I wouldn't have to redraw a ton of butterflies if I decided to move something. For my calendar boxes, these are five dots across and six dots down. 
I find this gives me enough space to include a couple things each day in each box. I made the header boxes for the days of the week a little larger this time as well. Normally I will just do sort of one square, um, but this time I did two in order to fit the typewriter stamps in. I really wanted that same typewriter font for my main March heading, but obviously don't have them in such a large size. If anyone knows where I could get some, that'd be great, but... Instead, I had to try and recreate the letters as best I could by hand. And I think they came out okay. For the dates, I decided that instead of writing them by hand, I would, I would use these ones that came on a washi tape roll. This didn't actually save me any time, as I had to cut up different sections to get all the numbers I needed, and it was fiddly to get them to lay where I wanted them to, but I do like that using the tape version made them stand out a little bit more than just writing them would have. I'm leaving this space on the right hand side for a notes section. I made the heading using that brown paper again and stamping out notes onto it. I also ripped around the edges to give it a slightly softer look, which I think works well with kind of the stark straight lines of the calendar boxes. Then it was butterfly time. I won't show you the full process again, but it's basically the same as the previous page en masse. I will show you how I made it look like a swarm of butterflies though, like you see on trees in the cities. I drew out the rough shapes in pencil again, this time turning the stencil slightly and overlapping the next outline with the previous one. I did that all around the page. After that, I decided the order of the butterflies. I decided to start from the top left and work my way down and around, so each butterfly was layered above the previous one, but below the next one. And I did this just by erasing the pencil lines so I could see which one would be on top, if that makes sense. I used the same pens as before to outline each butterfly and each section of the wings, including the white spots this time, which I'd be leaving blank. I find the colouring part of this process so satisfying to watch. I did the exact same thing as before, colouring the bodies and wings black, and then using that light orange Crayola super tip pen for the base colour of the spots before going over them with the zig orange pen. I just love this effect so much. I think it really brings the butterflies to life and makes them pop out of the page. But I don't know, what, what do you think? Do you prefer the flatter base colour or the version with the gradient? Let me know. I finished up this page by ruling some lines across the notes section of the page because I felt like it looked a bit too empty otherwise, and I think this element just helped it feel more finished. Next is my tracker page. I made the title for this page in the same way that I did the notes section on the previous page, by stamping out the heading onto those brown labels and then tearing around it to give it a softer look. This page for me is basically a bunch of tick boxes, and a bunch of tables isn't necessarily the most aesthetic thing, so I want to show you how I make this page both functional and aesthetically pleasing, without making any sacrifices. I pretty much use all the space that I can on this page, and I'm able to decorate it in a way that means I like to look at it, but it still works. I'm starting by drawing my biggest table. This is the one I use to track my pain and fatigue, as well as some little notes about things that might affect that. The pain and fatigue are both on a scale of 0 to 3, and then I have a section for things like whether I slept well, whether or not I was hydrated, if I took breaks, pain relief, if I asked for help. There's even a box I can tick if I just felt like I could not cope that day. Under that section, I have space to record my stress, anxiety, depression, and level of brain fog. These are just extra things I can keep track of to see if they affect anything else in the table. The table is wide enough to have a column for each day of the month, so all the information is kept together. On the side, I'm drawing my mini calendars. These are for other habits that aren't necessarily health related, but that I want to track. When I set these ones up, I didn't know what habits I wanted to track this month, but I gave myself room for four additional ones. Two of these are usually my AM and PM meds. I then decided to add another tracker. I may or may not have been inspired by Stray Kids's, Stray Kids's, every time I can never say it, oh my god, Stray Kids's Changbin, who honestly is just gender goals for me, <laughs> um, but I was inspired by him to actually start exercising with more purpose and with wellness in mind. I don't want to fall into bad habits again, 
So this isn't a big workout tracker, it's just a move my body kind of tracker. Again, it has space for each day of the month, and it has three things on it. Stretches, which I try and do when I first wake up to help alleviate any stiffness or pain from the night before. Ring Fit, which has honestly been my favourite way to work out in the past, so I want to get back into it. And then yoga. I wanted three things of different intensities, so it's really adaptive for how I'm feeling each day. That way I can always do at least one of these things. It's usually just the stretches, but the others are there just in case. Now for decoration. For this page, I'm doing another swarm of butterflies. I think any decoration you can make look like the background decoration is really good for turning what could be a boring or utilitarian page into something creative and bright and just nice to look at. To achieve that, I'm drawing these butterflies around the whole page but leaving some gaps so the shapes don't get completely lost. Something about having them be behind my trackers really helps this page feel full, but not crowded, in my opinion anyway. Honestly, I may go back and add a few more along the bottom later this month, but we'll see. I think the balance of, the balance of white space to work and decorative space is really important to me, and I think this style of decoration helps a lot with that. My next page is another one that I sometimes struggle with getting the balance of workspace and decorative space right. I see a blank page and I just want to fill it with pretty things, but I have to try and curb that so that I'm still leaving space for me to actually use this page. To overcome that on this page, I went for a slightly more minimal style that can build up over the month as I use it. I started by drawing one butterfly up in the top left hand corner. I love doing little corner details on pages that I need to keep more simple. It allows me to have a little bit of decoration to keep the page looking on theme, which actually also helps me want to use the page, but it still gives me enough space to actually write down my thoughts or doodle or make project-based to-do lists, you know, whatever else I need this page for that month. Initially, I was going to recreate the cover page somewhat and have the heading on a label that overlapped the butterfly, but I ended up actually changing this as I wanted the butterfly to be fully there. I did find other ways to emulate the cover page though, and I'll show you those in a moment. Something else that I did in the original journal that was commissioned was to create borders using washi tape on days that were special to the person using it, so I decided to bring that into this setup also. Of course it had to be the green and gold washi tape, and the brown grid tape. I just love this combination so much, and I think these colours work really well with the butterfly. Doing this did mean I had to go back in and cut the tape around the butterfly, and stick the notes heading back down on top of the washi tape, but I think it was completely worth it. I still wanted more on this page though, so I got out my stamp washi tapes. These ones are from Stationery Pal, but I was first introduced to this style by Notebook Therapy. I chose any that were nature-based or butterfly-themed from three different rolls and layered those over the washi tapes in the corner. To really tie this page back in with the previous ones, I also added that moon stamp again under the notes heading. To fill this page decoratively, but not in a way that meant I couldn't use it, I decided to rule lines across the left-hand page. All the paper that I wrote on growing up was like this, and adding this element to the spread with the butterfly, washi tape, and stamp stickers, and the brown note paper, kind of made me think of like a field researcher's notes or something like that. But maybe that's because I recently watched the Spiderwick Chronicles for the first time, so that's on my mind. Maybe I should make a Spiderwick Chronicles theme one day. Hmm, we'll see. I did leave the right hand page blank though so I could use that space on this spread for doodling. We're now at my final spread for this setup. This is my weekly spread for the first week in March, and here I wanted to combine a couple of things that I'd experimented with on the previous pages. I started by layering my favourite two washi tapes to create the background for the header, which I stamped onto that brown note paper before tearing the edges around for that fluffy look. I did remake this heading a couple times because I couldn't decide how I wanted to include the dates, but I eventually settled on this design, which is having weekly stamped at the top and then the dates included on this week handwritten underneath. Usually I like my weeklies to run Monday to Sunday, 
but if the month starts in the middle of a week, like this month, I will start there and run it to the closest Sunday before doing a full week in the next week. Sometimes this means a weekend might get its own weekly setup, but I just adjust the design so I'm using the space in the best way possible. I'm doing something a little different this month and I'm setting up this weekly on one page so it's more like a weekly events page and a to-do list for the whole week. But each day is actually going to have its own page. This is because I'm wanting to give myself more time and space to write thoughts down and not just to-do lists. I usually do keep notes and to-dos in my journal, but sometimes it ends up being one or the other. So this way it'll give me space for both. I don't know if this is what the original bullet journal system would call a daily log, but that's what I'm going to call it. To make the to-do list heading stand out, I wanted to do it on a separate piece of paper, but I didn't want to use that craft paper again. So I found this yellow and white plaid style paper, which I think ties in well with the rest of the colour scheme, but it's just a little bit lighter so it doesn't pull away from the bright and bold butterflies. The weekly boxes on my weekly setup page are all 5x5 five five dots for the date box and then are 9 dots across for the note section. I stamped the letter for the days of the week, but had to write the numbers because I don't have number stamps. I really wanted these boxes to be the bright orange, but I had to be really careful colouring them in because the ink that I used to stamp the letters is also water-based. So I had some smudging and bleeding. Again though, I'm trying to embrace the imperfection, so instead of beating myself up about it, and I think the finished result still looks good. I thought about adding these leaf or flower stickers to the page, but ended up deciding against that and used the postage stamp stickers that I have again. I also thought about adding washi tape along the bottom. Originally I thought about maybe using this black grid tape, but it was too bold and harsh, so I wanted something softer. So in the end I used this translucent light brown tape, which gave the exact effect I was looking for. For the daily page, I created a banner for the header along the top, emulating how I've done the other washi banners in other pages. I just coloured this banner in black though, as I didn't want more competing patterns. I do have this days of the week washi tape, and I decided to use that for the headers, instead of writing everything out. I really like the style of the writing on these, and it kind of emulates that imperfection... imperfectness... imperfection of the stamped letters, but in a different font, so I think they work quite well together. I gave myself a large space on the left hand side to write in my to-dos and notes and thoughts and you know whatever else I want to put in there. I think it's a little over half the width of the entire page and nearly the entire length too. I decided I wanted the right hand of the page to be part decoration part function, so I took more of that brown paper and stamped out focus onto it. I keep this piece of paper in the original size as it gives me a little bit more room to write the date and what my main focus or goal for that date is. So some days it might say filming or editing and other days it might say rest or recover. It's just a short reminder to myself. Decoratively, I had to include more swarming butterflies. I decided to draw just three this time but I was getting a little tired, so the way they overlap doesn't quite make sense. But overall, the look still works, and I'm happy with that. I also made sure to tuck these butterflies behind both my writing box and my focus box, so they weren't intruding on any functional space. And once those were all coloured in, I'm all done! So here's the final flip through. I hope you enjoyed the video friend, if you did like it please give this video a like and if you're new here hit that subscribe button so we can hang out some more. I've got a lot of projects happening at the moment and I can't wait to share them with you. Thank you for all your support and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!